Hi, and welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. Well, we're going to hear from the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency about the, the difficulty they have, oh, have had over travel. We're going to get into that subject, but first, we're going to hear from Dr. Stuart Shapiro, the president and CEO from the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, on, guess what, home care, personal home care, what should be done about it. It's been big news lately after these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, we're going to have a, a very interesting uh, show today. We have Dr. Stuart Shapiro, who is sitting here to my left, who is often the guest. He's one of these guys we call on from time to time. He's an expert in, among other things, a variety of health care subjects. He's now the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Health Care Association. They represent the nursing homes in the state of Pennsylvania. Licensed, do I got that right? Licensed nursing homes, but also <laughs> some assisted living facilities assisted and personal living. care homes and some home health agencies, okay. big, the whole spectrum. Big entity. Pleasure to be here. All right. Today. Well, look, let's, let's, I want to get right to the heart of the matter. You know, there was a story in the March 6th Harrisburg Patriot News here in the state capitol about this business of home care oversight, which apparently is not very well regulated. And I want you to, first of all, talk, I mean, I, I presume that most of our viewers, you know, we, we all got elderly parents or relatives, we're trying to figure out what to do with them. Give us the range of options, and, and before we get into this business of what the legislature may or may not do about one phase of this, of this uh, care. Sure. There's a whole potential continuum of care for the elderly. We'll deal primarily with the elderly tonight. Okay, yeah, today. absolutely. Uh, there's home care. At one end of the spectrum where you have your care, the care actually in the home. Then there's some, uh, an entity in Pennsylvania called personal care homes. And these are regulated by the Department of Public Welfare. And they're homes where people go to live where there's virtually no health care services provided. Then the next step that currently exists is a nursing home. Okay. And beyond that, a hospital. A hospital. And a nursing home are highly regulated facilities, primarily for people who are quite ill. And, in fact, the number of people mm -hmm. going in are Ill, more and more sick every day. What Pennsylvania needs is a category in the middle, something called assisted living. Okay. And that we'll get to later. Okay. Now let's talk, let's turn to this controversy over the personal care homes and uh, the degree to which the state has some First of all, let's talk about what do you think is the moral obligation, which you know could lead to legal, uh, to legislation for the government to regulate what goes on in uh, personal care homes. Well, I think the government has a real responsibility because their their role is to ensure the safety of the individuals in the home. Right now, there's about 1,600 of those personal care okay. homes in the state. By and large, they deliver excellent service. Unfortunately, the DP, Department of Public Welfare is way behind on its inspection. Right. And even those people overall are doing a, a great job. But there have been some horrific uh, bad actors. And these, some of these have been prosecuted. Right. And the, the Harrisburg paper and the Philadelphia newspapers have done a, a good job of reporting some of those uh, bad apples. All right. Now, uh, get to the heart of the matter. There, there are some legislators who believe that there needs to be more oversight. Is that correct? And there, 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 clear, there clearly needs to be more oversight uh, of, of the personal care homes. Uh, the Department of Public Welfare is about, well, way behind. There That's are, correct. About a thousand of the homes haven't been inspected in a year. and They recognize this and they're hiring more inspectors, but it goes further. Representative Gingrich has introduced a bill that's... That, it's a Republican from Palmyra, Pennsylvania. That, that has some real penalties okay. if, uh, and criminal penalties if people abuse the elderly or, or uh, take money from them or hurt them in any way physically or mentally. And legislation like that should pass. Okay. Then Senator Vance has legislation that Pat deals with... Pat Vance, State Senator Pat Vance from Cumberland County. Go ahead. ...deals with legislation also that deals with criminal background checks. Mm -hmm. And this is very important. And this needs to extend to all home health yep. workers throughout the Commonwealth, which is the, the legislation will, will do that. Historically, people who work at individuals' homes providing so, care have not been highly regulated. Okay, so let's get, let me just kind of get a focus on this. So what we have is the nursing homes are pretty well regulated. 
uh, and a lot of legislation, uh, lots of rules and regulations. When you get to the home care and aspect of it, and I guess more and more people because of the cost and the aging are using home care, personal home care, that's where you think the emphasis should be at the moment. Well, I think it needs to be across the I whole understand. spectrum. But I think that we have legislation by Representatives Gingrich and Senator Vance mm -hmm. that will tighten up the regulation and make sure that the people providing the services are doing it in an honest way mm -hmm. and in a safe way. Mm -hmm. And then Senator Vance takes it a step further by creating that new category called assisted living. And, and the assisted living category, how many, do you have any estimation about how many, uh, would, that, would we see a boom, a boomlet in a sense, uh, uh, if this legislation were to pass? Well, I think that if you look across America, about 40 states have a specific category called assisted living, right. and they have it because consumers want it. Right. Some consumers just need to be in a personal care home, should be regulated, should be well regulated, where they don't get any or virtually no medical services. Right. Then there's a nursing home. But there needs Excellent. to be in a category where if you, if you need some help with your activities of day, daily living and you need some medical care, that you can get it in a facility that is regulated and licensed as an assisted living facility. And right now, we don't have standards for that in the, in the Commonwealth. All right, uh, Dr. Stuart Shapiro, my special guest here today. Uh, this is why we have him. He, he, he can take the complicated subjects and explain them. Great job. You're always welcome on this program. We'll be back with uh, Dick Willie, the president and CEO of FIA. We're going to find out, first of all, what FIA does, and then we'll ask Mr. Willie about some of the travel situations and some of the, uh, uh, some of the other activities in FIA when we return. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Pennsylvania Medical Society, doctors and patients, preserve the relationship. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program. Joining me now is Dick Willie. He's president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency. Welcome, Dick. Thank Dick, you. that's a mouthful. <laughs> we sure ought to is. think, I know, but we all just call it FIA. Yeah. And, yeah. and before we get into you know, some of the controversies that uh, FIA has been involved with, I want to give you an opportunity, because I, I know FIA and I know what it does, but I want, I want to give you an opportunity to explain to the citizens of the state what FIA does and how important it is. Well, it, Terry, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate uh, being here. It's actually FIA powered by AES. Right. Uh, AES is uh, American Education Services, which is a commercial uh, brand. Uh, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a two-headed animal. On the one hand, FIA mm -hmm. providing the public services. On the other hand, AES doing the commercial uh, side of it. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, without us going out earning money, there would be no gifts to Pennsylvania. Right. We have some 2,700 people working all over the country, most of them here in, in Harrisburg, but we have offices in, in Ohio, mm -hmm. West Virginia, Delaware, Maryland, Florida, California, Puerto Rico. We're the largest guarantor and servicer coming out of the Caribbean. Uh, we, we make money by owning loans. By servicing loans, we have $50 billion worth of loans that we service for ourselves and some 400 other mm -hmm. banks around the country. We are insurer of student loans. We're the second largest insurer of student loans. And the, the net result of all of that activity on the commercial side right. is earnings that we then apply to uh, the various public service programs that we run, like the state grant program. And I, that's what I, I really want to talk about that because I think, you know, for most of our viewers whose kids want to go to kids, you know, at our age, we right. can say kids, yeah. I think. You know, for the young men and women who want to go to college, I want you to talk about what you're doing to provide loans and grants to students and how that's done. Well, <clears throat> first of all, uh, we administer the state grant program, which receives appropriations every year from the General Assembly. Uh, a couple of years ago, we started adding our own money to that, mm -hmm. uh, which had the net effect of being able to add more students and right. also increase the size of the grant so that the purchasing power of the student went up. Okay. Um, as you know, tuitions increase every yep. year, and the state grant was yep. relatively uh, flat. So now the grants go to generally to students who come from relatively poor, it's, you know, it, 
poor, you know, families, poor incomes, low, low incomes, let me put it that way. And the loans go to students in sort of higher income categories. Do I got that about right? Well, uh, the, the grants go are, are based on, on need, need. Okay. quite frankly. The loans uh, that the folks take out, uh, and it's, it's both... Uh, low-income and high-income kids these days right. that are taking out loans. Oh, sure. Uh, because uh, the tuitions are up there. So the grants don't cover the amount, so they Absolutely. don't have to borrow money. Right. Now, th how, about how many students in this state do you, do you, does your program cover? The, the state grant program okay. itself um, covers about 165, 66,000 students. That's huge. It's huge. Now, we, that's the money that comes from the legislature, that's correct? That's the money that comes to the legislature that we supplement, you supplement with our own, and we okay. pay for the administration of it so that every dollar appropriated by the General Assembly goes right, to that, the That's student. an important point. Now, let's go to the loan side. The loans, uh, there are about 600,000 students who get loans. Uh, and uh, there's some three and a half billion dollars worth of loans a year in Pennsylvania uh, that are um, provided to students. Okay, now let, let, let's now go to the, the, the other top, the, the, the big topic, of course, it's been in the news and it has to do with, you know, some $900,000 in travel expenses, which, you know, news, newspapers reported and, and, and others were sort of critical of the way in which the money was spent, 900000 some at, you know, places like, big resorts like Nimicolin, uh, arguments about limousine travel and all of that. Explain, first of all, how, how, how did that happen? How did it happen that, you know, 900,000... Now, in your big budget, it may not seem like a lot, but you know the environment right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I do, Terry, and, and, and at some point I would like to put it in perspective. Well, I want you to do that. Uh, <clears throat> um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, back in 2000, you know, some three or four years before I, I started at FIA, mm -hmm. Uh, the board um, and, and previous CEO started to have what we called business conferences. Okay. Because we do business, uh, we compete in a competitive environment. Every dollar that we make, we go out and compete for. We're, we're not the Turnpike, we're not PennDOT, we don't have folks coming to us who actually have to do business with us. Um, the net result was that a decision was made to have these business conferences bring in some of our clients from around the country and uh, entertain them, if you will, sure. goodwill, uh, let the board get to know these folks um, and uh, let them get to know us. Um, am I going to uh, sit here and try to defend uh, folks taking massages and facials <laughs> and doing limousines? Absolutely not, Terry. Uh, I think it got out of hand, and I think that the board uh, brought itself mm -hmm. uh, back into line with the new travel policies that it implemented last week, yeah. uh, which are, the, from what we can see, the toughest policies that we've seen, okay. uh, the tougher now, than the, the Commonwealth, tougher than the IRS this, requires. I, I, I'm, unlike many other boards and commissions, though some have legislators on, your board is essentially... I don't dom, dominate it. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a fair mm -hmm. word. You have 20 members in your board, 16 of them are legislators. They come and go over the years, right. and they're your boss, right? They set exactly. the policies and they run, they, they run, they run FIA. I, I mean, do you think part of what's going on, I mean, the, the attitude that some folks have now about Harrisburg, you know, the negative stories that have appeared, and, you know, some of them, you know, have a f pretty good basis about, and I, I don't want to put you in the business of criticizing your bosses, but the, but the point is that, in, that the, the board dominated by legislators sort of made it easier for that to happen. Is that a tough question? Or do you think it just sort of happened over time as, you, you know, uh, it, 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 you know you, you, this need to go and hang out with people who matter to you? Well, you know, there's always that need when you're in business. Anybody yeah. who's in business yeah. says that it takes money to make money. Right. Um, uh, again, I'm not going to, uh, you know, sit here and try to defend uh, facials and massages. Sure. Uh, at, which, by the way, were reimbursed by those people who did them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, more back to your question, um, you know, is the environment one in which it, uh, you know, more... Scrutiny is put on legislators? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, we're chatting with Dick Willie, the president and CEO of FIA, about the travel regulations and some of the controversy surrounding that. And uh, we'll be back after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by... 
the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to uh, Pennsylvania Newsmakers. I'm talking with Dick Loy, the president of FIA, the uh, lending and grant uh, organization that I think most people know providing uh, grants and uh, loans to the students of Pennsylvania. They also do a lot of other things, as President Willie was pointing out. Dick, let me uh, go to another another side of this. Uh, your your argument would be, and you're not, as I think you point out, you're not defending. Well, first of all, what have you done to correct what some would consider to be, you know, these abuses in travel? Let, let's explain that. Well, <clears throat> the uh, the board last Thursday uh, passed the travel policy. Uh, a new travel policy that for the first time included the members of the board within the travel policy. We'd always had a travel policy that, that you know, for those of us who work for FIA, uh, that was a tight travel policy. Uh, but uh, the, the board passed a policy that included uh, that, uh, uh, that themselves within the travel policy and, and tightened it up in certain areas where there were some ambiguities and not, not that uh, you know, we were reimbursing everybody for everything. Sure. Uh, but we tightened it up. We made it a little bit more difficult uh, than than the Commonwealth's. Uh, you know, expenses, for example, if, if anybody travels, they can't travel first class. The Commonwealth says you can travel first class under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Nobody can travel first class anymore. You know, so there were a number of areas within it that uh, tightened it up. But the principle was the, getting the board members within the travel. So process. in other words, your argument now would be that the complaints that folks had about you know, the quote $900,000 and some things that you talked about, you know, like facials and limousines and cigars, all, all that's now done. Oh, yeah, ab ab absolutely. And, and are you saying that uh, only the board members, not your staff, you know, were the folks who were doing that, that this was like past board members and clients of, potential clients of FIA? The, you know, relative to the retreat, uh, yeah. certainly there were staff members who went there, went on, you know, I got on, it. on those things. And who, and who were at the hotels and the... Uh, you know, going to the receptions and things like that, but not, go ahead. Yeah, but, you know, we've always had a policy for, for folks like myself right. that, you know, we don't reimburse for personal expenses. Sure. You know, if I use the honor bar at the hotel, I pay for it myself, okay. and, you know, those kinds of things. It. But the, that didn't apply to the board members. They've now put themselves within that. And, and again, they've, they have reimbursed for those, yeah. the, for those personal expenses. Yeah. But, you know, there's another point, Terry, that I would like to make, and not to defend those kinds of expenditures, but those conferences, um, while you say $900,000 was spent over a five-year period, um, the people who we invited, the customers and clients who came to us uh, or, or who come to us to use our services and pay us for our services, the folks who we invited to those conferences paid us over that period of time $100 million mm -hmm. in revenues. And so we're talking about expenses of less than 1% right. to derive revenues of $100 million. And I presume that, you know, again, not to defend, you know, because, you know, the, it's public money and, right. and you know right. the environment in which yep. we live. Uh, but your argument would be, I guess, if this were in the private sector, this wouldn't have been even, this would have relatively gone unnoticed. But we're in a whole environment where the public dollars and... I mean, I think that's your point. Exactly, Terry. You know, like I said, I'm not going, going to defend you know certain expenditures, but I have had conversations with with uh, with folks. I have lots of folks that we deal with, and yeah. I got a letter the other day from uh, from a guy in the private sector supporting us, saying, you know, we spend far more than that yeah. on developing dif business. Dif different environment. All right, we're going to continue with this discussion with President Willie of the FIA when uh, we return. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. 
have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Builders Association, building today for a better tomorrow. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. We're talking with Dick Roy, the president and CEO of a somewhat beleaguered FIA. FIA has now, uh, you know, uh, changed its travel policies, uh, uh, ex explaining more and more about what, what has transpired. Before I get on to, you know, I want to end on a positive note, you know, a little bit about what you all are doing in, in terms of gifts and contributions. But before that, you know, two agencies, uh, two uh, WTAE in uh, Pittsburgh and the Harrisburg Patriot News in Harrisburg, you know, sought for something, I don't know, a year and a half to get certain information from you all, and you, you under the right to know law, you didn't provide it. What was the ra your rationale for that? Well, it was really the WTAE request that took okay. us to court, quite frankly, okay. <clears throat> because that request uh, delved into records that we thought were proprietary in nature. Remember, we have to compete for business. We had just gone through a hostile takeover attempt by a major competitor uh, and uh, very concerned uh, about uh, releasing proprietary information in terms of who, who potential customers are we talking uh, to, what kinds of uh, proprietary training are we, are we sending our people to, uh, that kind of stuff. And, and so we took it to court uh, because we were concerned that it would open up uh, a precedent for our biggest competitor to come in and ask for whatever they wanted. Right. And you and, lost. And, well, we lost partly. The, right. Quite frankly, what the court said was, yes, you do have trade secrets, yeah. and you can redact those trade secrets. All right, we only have about 45 seconds. To, I would send on a positive note for your contribution. Say something quickly about that. Well, I, I just that. Over the last 10 years, we've given away a billion dollars. Over the next five mm -hmm. years, the board has committed another billion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the important point here is no gifts without you know, our ability to go out and right. earn that money. All right, Dick, I want to thank thanks for coming on the program. We wanted to give you an opportunity to you know, express for his point of view. All right, thanks for uh, watching Pennsylvania Newsmakers. We'll see you next week, and stay well.